Since 1996, May 7th has been set aside by World Athletics Governing Body, the International Association of Athletics Federation, IAAF, to commemorate World Athletics Day. The day was initially set aside to create awareness among children on the importance of fitness and athletics activities and to promote unity and friendship among athletes. Now this year's event was set to be rather peculiar as it would have been a prelude to the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. Of course, the Olympics are regarded as the biggest and grandest stage for gathering of the best, athlete, best athletes across the world. Sadly, the outbreak of the coronavirus across every continent of the world has caused athletics championships such as the Diamond League and some Olympic qualifiers to be cancelled and the Olympic Games themselves have been pushed back to 2021 and that is only if COVID-19 has been defeated. The Japanese government and the IAAF came to a unanimous decision in April this year to postpone the Games and prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of Japan had invested $12.6 billion to build new sporting infrastructures and improve on its old ones. As it stands, they won't be recouping any parts of that money until maybe the summer of next year. Nigeria, however, who over the years has always sent athletes to participate in the Olympic Games will just like other nations pause its preparations for now as there are scarce resources to either gather athletes or fly them out for camping or qualifying tournaments. But even as this year's World Athletics Day is being celebrated at a distance, what lessons can the athletes and indeed the administrators, administrators draw from this uh, period? And what steps are being taken to revive the athletics sector post COVID-19 so that Nigeria's flag will hopefully fly at next year's Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Many people assume athletics and athletes are strong and healthy enough to fend off any contagious infection, including the coronavirus, which is a respiratory infection. How are athletes who are seen as unique groups facing the global challenge of COVID-19? This will form part of our discussions tonight. Welcome to Nigeria Today. I am Dennis Adigunloy. And joining us on the program uh, to discuss uh, COVID-19 and its impact on uh, athletics and sports in general is uh, Sule Udekwojo. He is a sports uh, analyst. Welcome to Nigeria Today. It's my pleasure to be here. All right. And also joining us uh, via Skype is uh, Dr. Mike Ehanuru, also a uh, sports uh, analyst and uh, administrator. Thanks for being with us. Good evening. Let me come to uh, Sule first. Um, how would you evaluate uh, the impact that uh, this COVID-19 that is uh, ravaging the world, what is it, its impact been on athletics uh, and what is the hope for recovery? I would say um, in just one word, humongous. It's been total. Mm. And um, we could just um, take hope in the fact that um, we'll still be alive you know, for more years to come and that's why we're all trying to keep safe so that uh, the pandemic can go we'll go back to our lives again mm -hmm. go back to athletics and world sports generally can come back for good mm -hmm. but its impact is total on the athletes mm -hmm. on you know federations on fans of athletics on sponsors generally it's it's nobody has been spared all stakeholders in the athletic world has you know had it very very rough mm -hmm. as you know, concerns the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just awesome that it's completely, not just athletics, it's the entire world, you know, of sports and of course the world uh, spectrum as a whole. We talk of business and, you know, entertainment and everything. I mean, it's just complete. And uh, in terms of obviously this um, impacts greatly the athletes themselves, what's has this actually done to their psyche in terms of preparations for sports, in terms of their competitive edge? 
I think it's, it's, it's like I said, it's complete. It's, mm. it's just that they can take solace in the fact that um, mm. it, they've not been secluded. They, you know, it's um, a, a complete rampage yeah. on everybody. In, in the entire humanity mm. has to bear this cause. So it's not just, you know, they let themselves alone. Mm. And then if they have that in mind, then of mm. course they, they should be happy that there's life after this whole pandemic and then we live to see even brighter days ahead mm -hmm. you know because what what it, it has to it has brought to them you mm -hmm. know particularly is the fact that uh, if you look at the biggest uh, uh, tournament the, that uh, the world look up to you know the whole world look up to the olympics as mm -hmm. i mean as a mother of all you yeah. know events mm -hmm. and that's almost uh, for sure now it's been called off for mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and that you expect that athletes were looking forward to that sometimes some athletes might not be there again yep. those who are ready this to make this last one, chance it might not mm -hmm. i mean happen for them again you know because mm -hmm. age is there yeah you know fitness level is there when you 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 time yourself to peak at a particular time mm -hmm. maybe some of them are working towards the olympic to peak at about, at that, mm -hmm. about that time and then win laurels for their country yeah. and of course themselves if you're not lucky this impact is going to be wholesome. Mm. You need to get yourself back psychologically, physically, mm. you know, to be able to be in line to, you know, be prepared for the next time. Oh. Uh, the, the, the next time comes up, we are not even sure when it's going to be now. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to uh, Mike now. Um, Mike, uh, if uh, you're there, um, just give us your take. Uh, we're all, we were all prior to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic this outbreak uh looking forward it's an it's a it's a four yearly event the olympic games we were all uh, looking forward to it um, not least the athletes themselves uh, who have worked all their lives to get to this point just give us an idea of just how devastating this covid19 has been on their own you know their careers their life and uh, basically their well-being generally Um, I think that the government impact um, the respondent has is on the health and safety situation for members of the general public. Um, it's a pandemic, it's not just um, a localized situation. Um, for athletics, most especially, where you have um, over 60 events, um, if you add the paralympics, you need to be very cautious because you're putting in too many people in the same confined spaces for um, upwards of six weeks or more. And um, again, it is a good call on the National uh, Olympic Committee. It took a lot to get them there because they have to put in a lot of consideration for sponsorship, for investments, and to properly analyze what postponements would mean in the lives of athletes and, uh, um, and to the country, to the host country. So again, um, there's even a tobacco right now, and who pays for the postponement? Um, so yes, the impact is on the athletes, and the athletes themselves are prepared for this. Um, it can leave them a proper window for those who need you get more time to prepare, this will give them the opportunity to do that. And I'm sure that in the next couple of months, as we begin to see sporting events begin to open, um, there are chances for them to compete and sharpen their skills and, and, and themselves to get ready for next year will be increased. So again, um, this is a worldwide pandemic and we cannot be too careful. Um, with the ramifications of keeping in close to 100,000 people in the same space uh, coming from over 200 countries, um, we do not want to take chances on what the impact will be. All right, uh, we'll come back to you. Just stay there for us. Um, let's come back to um, uh, Sule now. Um, the World, uh, World Athletics and uh, International uh, of, um, Athletics Foundation have put forward $500,000 uh, as uh, relief funds to help athletes uh, experiencing financial uh, hardship mm. are Nigerian athletes included in this and uh, if so how many of them have uh, benefited yeah for sure you um, i would say yeah they are part of it but i'm not sure mm -hmm. um 
or who and who has benefited for now okay. but i'm sure they are they are there especially the the likes of those who participate mm. at the world events like the diamond league the world athletics uh, events uh, indoor championships and all the rest uh, i'm sure they're they going to benefit it's going to cut across the entire you know um federations uh, that's uh, athletic federations that are affiliated into the world athletic federation mm. so they, they should benefit but i can't uh, see pers Pinpoint specifically exactly who who's benefited for now all right uh, before the uh, covid 19 uh, pandemic uh, there have been issues of uh, poor preparation uh, fire brigade approach to uh, tournaments uh, lack of proper welfare for athletes uh, in terms of moving forward uh, what do you think athletes, uh, athletics administrators in Nigeria in particular, must do to ensure that the uh, athletics sector does not uh, suffer post-COVID-19? Uh, if you talk about uh, crash programming, I mean, mm. <laughs> it's the hallmark of our preparation for yeah. all sporting events. Uh, mm. uh, it's, not, it's not a good thing, but um, mm. I think we're on course this time uh, for the first time in a long time. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't start very well, but we're getting it right mm -hmm. was, you know, the band there and um, this whole thing uh, disrupted it all over mm -hmm. again. But I would say it's an ample chance for, you know, the administrators to mm -hmm. Uh, get their thinking caps up. The challenge is going to be funding, yeah. and that's a, a, that's a, has always been the challenge mm -hmm. over time. You know, the lack of preparation is not because we don't know what mm -hmm. to do. It's not because the athletes are not sure which mm -hmm. events to participate in. But it has largely been due to lack of funding, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a major challenge now. Yeah. In fact, than ever before, I think it's even going to be bigger mm -hmm. challenge than any other time. You know, because. It's going to be difficult for government to mm. be able to, you know, come out of um, yeah, this pandemic uh, horror and get funding, you know, for almost every other thing. And yeah. uh, to get even sponsors has always been a problem in this mm. part of the world. Mm. And to get them, oh, you know, have, they two are getting through all this problem. They are having a very hell of, I mean, of time right now. Mm. I mean, business is almost totally down, mm. and so so they are not making as much money as yeah. you expect they make. So it's mm. going to be a problem. How are they going to even support athletes now? How are they going to support federation? So mm. I think money is going to be a challenge, but it's it's an opportunity for us to buy time. Mm -hmm. if, it, if 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 you if you understand yeah. what it means to prepare for major events, sure. we'll buy time, mm. get some funding, mm. you know, and as it comes in, you know, let's take it up and start preparation all over again. All right. Okay. We'll take a quick break now the program is the nigeria today and we're talking about the uh, impact of uh, covid19 on uh, athletics uh, we'll be back shortly do stay with us covid19 transmission is mostly through droplets from sneezing and saliva the most effective way to protect yourself from the virus is to practice good personal hygiene Wash hands with soap under running water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer if water is not available. Maintain at least two meters distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Cover your mouth and nose with your elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Dispose of the used tissue immediately. If you have traveled recently to a country with COVID-19 outbreak in the last 14 days and you have a fever, cough or breathing difficulty, call NCDC toll-free numbers before going to the hospital. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Uh, welcome back. Uh, if you're just joining us, the program is Nigeria Today and uh, our focus on this episode is uh, COVID-19 uh, on an its impact on uh, athletics. Uh, if we can go back now to our guest on Skype, uh, Dr. Mike Ehanoro. Um, yeah, the, you were having some issues with your audio earlier, so that's why we had to abruptly uh, come back to the studio, but um, I'm hoping that uh, the audio is better now. Uh, let me put to you the question I put to our guest in the studio in terms of uh, 
this time factor that uh, Nigeria now has in terms of preparations for major tournaments. No doubt the situation everyone's in now is uh, quite a grave and dire one, but uh, assuming the Olympics were to go ahead uh, next year, God willing, um, certainly a lot of time has been afforded for better preparation of athletes in terms of their welfare, in terms of funding and all the rest of it. Just give us your perspective on that. Um, look, it's, it, there's not going to be anything different. I'm, I'm, I, I, and I can tell you, if you're looking at it from the Nigerian perspective, there's not going to be anything different. Um, we're going to leverage on foreign-based athletes. Um, for the majority of the PAP, the Nigeria team would reside outside Nigeria. Um, the cost of their training camps would be born in Forex. And for those who are living within Nigeria, which will form maybe 10 to 20 percent of the team that's going to go, uh, there will be last minute issues. I mean, we've had the last five, six Olympics should have taught us some lesson. And this is to my big brother, engineer Habu Gumel. Um, he is an erudite um, administrator and a man I respect a lot. But again, I, 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 I want to advise him to be brave, um, to really turn the tables upside down this time around. Um, because we should not be having a discussion on funding. Um, We've known the date of the Olympics on the evening of the uh, Brazil situation. We knew Tokyo was coming. So this is not something that dropped on our laps or is coming up like the African Cup of Nations that is uh, biannually. Um, and again, we, we, so what is the issue? If the Olympics were to hold today, let me say what I think Nigeria should have done rather than say what they didn't do. By now, we should know where our camping sites would be. This is, um, we are in May. So we should know where our camping sites should be. Um, we should know exactly that teams by now should be in their training camp preparation in the different locations in the world. Um, for the teams, um, I think they would be moving and getting prepared to head to Tokyo next month. So funding is not the issue because the funding for the Olympic 2020 should be in place for those activities as at May the 7th, if you are going in July, because all your athletes will be in training camp by now. So we should not have a discussion on funding. What we should be looking at right now is delays that have emanated, that have added 11 and a half more months into the calendar that's what we should be talking about that's what is 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 what is required right now because that is the unforeseen situation because right now as of today i want to be to give nigeria uh, the benefit of the doubt that we already have had preparatory funds released for the olympics that is happening in july so i will not go into that discussion to say what nigeria has or does not have but May 7th, we should have teams in training camps abroad. Athletes are already working and preparing third level, last final high gear, because they'll be coming into Japan a month and a half from, a month from now, another 35 days, they should be heading to Japan. So by now, funding for Olympic 2020 should not be a discussion that we should be discussing. What we should be discussing is what Nigeria should contribute because of 11 and a half more months that have been added to Olympic preparation. So we should be able, by now, I expect that associations would have given their budgets for what it would take for 11 more months that have been added. Um, athletes that have a training program would have submitted those training programs to the national coaches, and those national coaches would have preferred and budgeted and submitted them to the federations. And this is going worldwide. This is not limited to Nigeria. Worldwide. And now that athletes are isolating, the cost of training has increased because you're doing plyometrics. You're doing, uh, you're getting specialized diets that is delivered to you anywhere you are. Your coaching staff may not be with you, so you're working remotely on, and transversing via um, what we're doing right now, via technology. So. What is the cost of that for each individual athlete that was not foreseen? Because this is 11 months that was never budgeted for. 
the athletes should have submitted by now those costs to their coaches which will be forwarded to the national coaches which will be forwarded to the associations so i'm expecting that the noc by august september this year will get those costs and the minister for sports will be receiving them towards september this year and they will start to put them in appropriation properly for nigeria or the various international organizations that will bear the cost for all of these extensions so again um if we are still discussing funding, the question is what type of funding are we discussing right now? If it is the funding for the extension, yes, that is unforeseen and thrown on the world that none of us have a, uh, we did not see this coming, so we're preparing and adjusting to the realities as we see them. I want to take it that Nigeria is a responsible country, that we, engineer Habu Gumel, who I've known for God knows since I was a kid, um, who is a 40 year administrator, would not be in a situation where he's still discussing funding for Tokyo 2020. So uh, I, I would want that all of that preparation would have been done by November, December last year, and the appropriation be released by January, February this year. So we are not in a situation to discuss the funding for sure. the Olympics 2020. All right, all right. Our but time... we are looking at the extension and what it has done. Okay, um, time is uh, fast uh, against us. Just give us uh, your words of advice to uh, athletes as they do prepare against uh, next year briefly, please. Well, again, um, the, the athletes should continue to do what their, 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 their colleagues worldwide are doing. Um, isolated trainings, specialized trainings, um, looking forward to competitions that are going to be slated for October, November, December this year. The season is going to move from the early parts of spring down to winter. So we will see a lot more indoor trials, indoor athletics. We will see athletics being done behind closed doors and it is going to be digitally followed. It's just going to be athletes that are socially distant from each other except when they come to the starting line. There will be no hogs at the end of the race. Everybody will disperse. There will be athletes that will be running with facial masks or mask covers that would allow them for breathe air, to breathe air. There will be athletes that will be putting on long sleeves that will be training isolatedly. There is no international athlete right now who is not in training. That is a fallacy. Even the local ones residing in Nigeria are already training privately. So All right. that is not every athlete is getting ready for next year. Okay, the question is, the competitions are going to start later yeah. and they will run through to the Olympics of next year. So I see competitions happening from January, February, March next year, All right. running through to June, July. Thank you, Dr. Mike. All right, uh, just uh, briefly, uh, Mr. Sule, just give us your final words of advice to athletes as they go forward against uh, next year. Well, I heard him, um, my colleague over there, well, mm. right. Um, I like to believe that the situation he painted is rather ideal. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's not just what it takes here. It's a yeah. different thing. I don't know why it's like that, but it's mm. different. But moving forward, um, I expect the athletes should be training, just like you said. Uh, it shouldn't stop them. Yeah. The kind of training they should do now should be specialized, you know, restricted largely individually. Mm -hmm. Of course, following uh, the dictates of their various trainers, mm -hmm. but looking forward to uh, more tournaments that's going to come up. Uh, I expect indoors and other uh, selected, uh, you know, world championship could still come in to mm -hmm. fill up the gaps that's going to come right. in there. Okay. And I hope that um, it's an opportunity to, you know, get them into tip top shape. And Absolutely. I pray that. Uh, um, the challenge of funding will not be a problem, but I know it's the challenge. Sure. All right. Uh, Sule Unekwojo, uh, sports analyst, uh, thanks for giving us your insights on our topic on Nigeria. It's my pleasure. And thanks again to uh, Dr. Mike Ehanor, a sports analyst and uh, administra th uh, administrator. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us also. And uh, thank you out there for watching. And uh, remember, Nigeria Today is live every weekday at 7.30 in the evening. My name is Dennis Adigundoy. Thanks for spending your time with us.